Do you understand the significance of your ALKFOS, AST, ALT and Billy Rubin? I didn't until recently and now I'm going to explain them to you. In this video we're going to look at bilirubin metabolism. Hi, if you're new to this channel my name is Jonathan Downham and I am an advanced critical care practitioner here in the UK. I've worked in critical care for over 25 years and during that time I have never stopped learning. I share a lot of that learning here on YouTube as well as on my podcast and on Facebook. All of the links you can find below. If you want to subscribe to this channel and give the video a like, please do. Let's begin by understanding exactly what bilirubin is and how the body deals with it. In order to do so, we have to start with the red blood cells, since it is the breakdown of these that eventually creates bilirubin. So red blood cells are constantly being created in the bone marrow and they have a life cycle of approximately 120 days. After this time period, they are then broken down in the body, mainly in the spleen, but also in the liver and bone marrow. The main constituent of red blood cells is haemoglobin, which is responsible for the transport of oxygen around the body. This is broken down into its constituent parts being heme and globin. The globin is a protein which is then broken down into amino acids and reused in the building of cells. The heme is broken down into unconjugated bilirubin and iron. Unconjugated bilirubin needs to be removed from the body as it's toxic. Because the unconjugated bilirubin is lipid soluble, it has to then bind with albumin in order for it to be carried around the bloodstream. The albumin carries the unconjugated bilirubin to the liver. In the liver, there are also Kupfer cells which will break down the haemoglobin with the same result of haemoglobin. When in the liver, the unconjugated bilirubin is converted into conjugated bilirubin through a reaction with glucuronic acid. Conjugated bilirubin is water soluble and this then is excreted by the liver as bile via the bile duct and into the small intestine. Then further down the intestine in the large bowel through the interaction with bacteria it is further converted into urobilinogen by removal of the glucuronic acid which was added earlier. If this stays in the bowel it turns into stercobilin which is then excreted in our faeces giving them the typical brown colour. About 85% is excreted this way. Some will also be excreted via the kidneys as urobilin or go back through the cycle via the liver. So that's the cycle of bilirubin. In the next video I'm going to talk about some of the illnesses that might cause a problem with our bilirubin and how we can narrow this down using total bilirubin, indirect and direct bilirubin.